Hello, Jen Adams here. Uh, the Ask Jen live session today on uh, Friday at one o'clock as planned. It's Friday the 19th of uh, February. We are nearly, I get a feeling, coming out of lockdown. We've got a big announcement on Monday, so hopefully uh, we can start to make some plans with opening up clinic, which would be very nice um, so that I can actually start having these conversations directly with human beings rather than to camera and craving all these likes and things like that but um, if you are watching and you have a question based upon anything that I talk about or you're thinking to yourself do you know I, I've been thinking about that I'm a bit worried or um, do you know I wonder what the answer to that is or what this is so uh, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, I can't speak that is what I'm all about is about helping you to understand the uh, concerns that you may have with your skin um, and about any products that you perhaps use. This isn't about products. I'm not going to do a big product thing. However, I have got some supplements at the end that I do want to talk about, but um, try not to be too promo on that. But my role is, is I want to educate you. You know, I want you to understand what it is that you can do or that is happening to your skin that will help you then make a decision based upon um, not evidence, but um, on understanding what it is that you're looking for rather than purchasing products purely based upon the influencer or the posh marketing or the packaging or anything like that. So that's what I'm trying to do is that when someone asks me a question, I like, I have been using these sessions, someone's watching, hello, <laughs> hi there. I've been using these sessions to give a bit more of a backstory to the answer because it's really hard on YouTube to just give you a quick answer to something that's perhaps you know massive in your life um, and then I just give you like a quick one-liner and also on an advice point of view it's quite hard just to give a quick one-liner um, and then just answer that question direct because sometimes it, there's, there's some variables um, so that's sort of what we're going to talk about today I've got a great question and um, that I've kind of broken into my usual three um, pointers that I'm going to talk about, give it a bit of a backstory, add a bit of education to understanding what's happened to your skin, and then my nutrition corner where I try and get you to think a little bit more about what you can put in your body rather than just on your body. So yes, I am now live at uh, gone one o'clock as planned, so thank you for my little patience for my little introduction. So today's question really was about what to do during a phase of purging on your skin. So the question came from a lovely um, uh, young lady from uh, Bulgaria, uh, Joanne. Thank you for Joanne for getting in touch. And she was watching my um, Which Lotion P50 is Right video, which I recorded, oh my God, I mean, probably three or four years ago. It was that long ago that Lotion uh, that PGIM 400 wasn't even made then so I only talk about VW and plain and we don't have 1970 over here either so there's another reason why that's not on that video if you do go and have a look for it but anyway so yeah so Joanne was asking me that she her question was sort of like based upon she'd had a reaction to the sun last year and having recently purchased a load of BR products she was struggling with the lotion P50W as her skin keeps reacting with the sort of ra um, red red pimples under the skin and dryness so her question was well you know what do i do and and her her sort of gut reaction was i'm going to give up on the p50 or only use it like once a month as like a treatment so she asked me you know what what would i do in those circumstances so we've oh, got a thumbs up thanks any comments you guys that are watching i've got my little comment box here so i can bring them over and i can answer them directly if you've got any questions or queries so going back to our Joanne um yeah so what I did answer it and I will answer the question but what this opened up for me was it a, a point that I could then answer it in sort of the three ways so what I'm going to talk about is I don't want to keep talking about BR and lotion p50 as a product I want people to understand liquid exfoliators and acid toners whatever is the, the word that you're talking about yes I've got history with Vilaj Qureshi yes I've used the products for many years I don't use them now um, I do use a bit of P50, which helps me explain this story, but that, so that's the backstory. But I'm not here just to keep harping on about them. I just want you to understand the, the generic element of all of this. But anyway, so with this in mind, the topics are reactions to liquid exfoliators and acetones, as I say. How to then treat your skin when it does purge. 
and understanding the differences between a purging skin and, and, a, and a, I can't speak today, and an allergic reaction to something. Because this was one of Joe's questions, Joanne's questions back to me was, am I allergic to it? Um, so I sort of try and, uh, today's session is to sort of back up my response that I did. And then as I say, I'm going to touch on my little nutrition corner. Sorry, I'm looking down, I'm looking at my notes just to make sure that I'm, I'm on point. So, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm human. The, so the reactions to the liquid exfoliators. So the key thing is, is Joanne was uh, reporting this sort of pimple under the skin, red, it's nearly a rash. OK, and it, it doesn't unless you've got really seborrheic skin, it doesn't really turn into a spot. It's not very pleasant and there's a bit of a reaction. So this is what purging looks like. OK, it's under the skin rather than over on top of the skin. So going back to why is her skin purging? Obviously, she'd had this reaction to the sunshine. She'd obviously got sensitive, reactive skin. She's gone to BR. BR have given her, I think it must be in Bulgaria, have given her a load of stuff, typical BR, given her loads and loads of three or four different serums and creams and masks and all this sort of stuff and thrown in the lotion P50. And what's happened is, is on her sensitive, reactive skin that's been triggered from this um, photosensitivity that she gave, that she reported to me previously, year before I think it was, is that the acid mantle in her skin, or the other one that I like to use is her skin microbiome, is is being affected, is unbalanced, and by adding in the lotion P50, it's causing a reaction at that level, and. I, I talk a lot about pH levels because that's how I was taught in relation to lotion P50 and how we talk in clinic when we're looking at degrees. I'm going to move away from liquid exfoliators and degrees of peels. So if I'm doing a pre-peel, yeah, I've got different depths and we talk in pH levels. But in the scheme of things, when you're at home and you're doing your home skincare, forget pH levels. Yeah, it, 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 you don't need to go there. But what it what I would like you to get your head round is that this is alive, okay? And keep stripping it and stripping it too much. It doesn't like it, it will react. And what's happened is she's used her lotion P50 with a lot of other products and her skin microbiome, which is like a, her immune system and the bacteria and the oil and everything that sits on her skin, has kind of gone, eh, what the hell do you want? Oh yeah, it's had a complete panic. And it's trying its best. And again, on my nutritional side of things, when I talk to clients, I put them on a detoxification or what I call elimination phase. It's exactly the same. As soon as you do something to the body or to the liver or to the skin and try and sort of change its balance, change the pH balance, you get this kind of poorly before you get better is probably the best way to do it. So you know what it's like. If you go on a detox, you have sort of two or three days where you feel absolutely like crap. And then once you get over this hump as such, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, light is completely at the other end of the tunnel. It's amazing. And your skin goes through the same thing. Initially it's like, Argh. but with a little element of consistency and, and the sort of slow and low approach that I often talk about, it will come through. It, it's, the key thing is, it's not to panic when your skin is purging. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's not great if you're, on camera or you're due out or you're about to do a zoom i mean you know you can go back and just blur the lines nobody can see it's not a great experience it happened to me only the other day which is why i thought this was a really apt question because like i say i've been eight months without lotion p50 and then the other day oh bear with no phone's going off typical um and then all of a sudden eight months later i, I thought sod it let's have a go i'm going to see what it does to my skin and weirdly i went through a whole purge of it i've been using this stuff for nearly eight years okay so anyone's skin can have this reaction to a liquid exfoliator all right and when i'm talking a liquid exfoliators what i'm talking about is this kind of purging reaction will happen to any type of liquid exfoliator. So we're talking actives, I suppose, is another way to look at these things. So you've got your AHAs, or I talk a lot about PHAs because they're uh, they're bigger molecules than an AHA. So they don't go in so deep and cause so much disruption. 
and hence slow and low. So you've got PHAs, AHAs, obviously you've got your, your BHA, your salicylic acid. So they're the big boys that are often in the sort of exfoliating side of things. And then you've got your, your other actives like your retinols um, and then your vitamin C's, a bit niacinamide and those sorts of things. So these are the types of products that will cause this detoxification effect, this purging effect. And what it's doing is, is that it's trying to get the skin cell turnover to push through itself quicker and you're exfoliating across the top and taking away the dead skin cells. And it's just all happening a bit too much for the top layer of your skin to sort of adapt. As time passes, and I'm talking, uh, I mean, it could be three or four days, mine lasted, but it could be seven to 10 days. As time passes, the communication from the top layer of cells goes down through, through to the cells via your immune system. And it has a little chat with it and it will say, look, this is up here, right? So when you get there, be prepared. And then, and then this, this mesh just goes down and down and down. So by the time day 10 skin cells have come to the top, they're kind of forewarned and forearmed to take on this liquid exfoliator. And this is the cycle of your purging, yeah? The top skin layers, they're old, they're, they're, they're mature. They're like, well, we know what's going on. And then you do this to them and then you change their acid mantle and you change their environment. Like, That's what purging is, it's just this, I was gonna say inflammation, but I'm gonna, I'm stopping because I'm gonna use inflammation for allergy reactions. It's just a, yeah, it's just this bleh of what's happening. It's, it's they're pushing through, they've grown too quick and no one's all in order. So it's this disruption, as I say, as your skin uh, acid mantle or your skin microbiome. Okay, so that's what purging is. Now an, an allergic reaction to a product is very different. And I wanted to try and help people to understand the two differences. So an allergic reaction is an immune response. It's not a bunch of sounds having a row with you because you're asking it to do too much too soon. An immune response is a cascade of information going through inflammation. So the clues are the key indicators of inflammation. Think stub toe. What happens when you stub your toe? You don't get a spot, do you, right? What you get is you get heat, you get swelling. And then as that swelling drops down, you get itchiness and you get flakiness as it heals that burst area. Okay, so this is inflammation, which is very different to purging. Okay, two different things. So the thing is with an, an allergy or a reaction to a product because your immune system doesn't like it, it will create an inflammatory cascade. Okay, now you hear me talk about inflammatory cascades as positive things when we're dealing with collagen stimulation and um, skin rejuvenation. Yes, it is the same, but we're dealing with a different topic, okay? It's the same response, but it's on your skin. And this inflammation is in the same place. So it's, your, it's within your skin microbiome, and it's an inflammation where your cytokines within your immune system are looking to create or heal and create antibodies and react. Now, the other differences within an allergy versus a purging is it doesn't have to be instant. This is the joys of food intolerances. I have the same issue on that side. You can have obviously the instant food intolerance. Yeah, so you can have like anaphylactic. So I always think of that as A is in IgA. Yeah, or you can have antibodies which are like IgE and IgGs. So antibody ones take time because the immune system has to kind of look at the product on the skin, analyze it, well, initiate the fact I don't like it, then it has to analyze it, then it's got to create some antibodies to protect it. So an allergy, if it's in that kind of category, can take between three to five to six to 10 days, years, months, or whatever, okay? It depends on your immune system and, and its severity. If it's anaphylactic and you are allergic, then yeah, bang, put the stuff on, within three seconds, your skin's gonna go red, all right? I hope that makes sense. But you can become allergic to something over time is what I'm trying to get across. And the more, more often, alert, and I say more often, I have no science evidence or clinical evidence in, in my back pocket to say this to you. So I'm just sort of going over the surface where people may give me examples that I've got this wrong. But in general, you will be allergic to ingredients within the product, okay? Not an active. Does that make sense? 
So an active is causing something that will cause a reaction and an in, an ingredient will uh, react, will cause an inflammatory reaction or you can be allergic to it. And when I'm saying an ingredient, I'm talking about these kind of like parabens that are in there as, as nasties particularly, but also good stuff, right? You, you know, lavender oils, peppermint oils. You could be even allergic to aloe vera oil for crying out loud, you know. The, the, it's extracts in products more often we have allergic reactions to the perfumes and the and the rose hips and all these sorts of things okay but not very often <laughs> is that particularly vague enough not very often do you get an allergic reaction to unless you know you're allergic to sugar but i don't think people are actually allergic to sugar it just causes inflammation but anyway so i'm thinking glycolic so you don't often have an allergic reacting to lactic acid, even if you've got a dairy intolerance, yeah? Because it's about the protein that's in the food, not the lactic acid that's in the milk. So these are two very different things. So that's hopefully kind of helped you to understand. Now, what does, an, as I say, an allergic reaction has got this itchy redness and heat. Heat's a big indicator. If, you, if your skin's a bit hot to touch and very red and very angry, and again, unfortunately, not time isn't an indicator at any particular point, Obviously, the more you put the cream on, the body will get a little bit smarter and actually might start talking to you quicker. But you know, you get a, you'll get you get an idea of an allergic reaction versus a purging action. OK, so these are the two that I really wanted to help people to understand the differences because the solutions will help. So if we're going through a purging phase and you have like this Joanne Blesser, she's typically... <laughs> I shouldn't poo-poo them, bless them. But typically we go to BR and you come home with four quintessential serums, a, a targeted serum, a lotion P50 and a mask. I mean, you really, really don't need all this stuff. And I can see where, where this lady's ended up with all these products because they sort of do match what she would have presented to the, to the client, to the uh, therapist. But what's happened is, is all the other stuff has calmed down her hydration, her pimples, her... Uh, her dryness that sort of stuff but it hasn't got to the root cause of the problem because then every time she exposes the skin to something quite strong let's say and those of you that use uh, lotion p50 lotion p50w has arnica in it so it's purposely designed for sensitive reactive skins it's got more lactic in it you know it, it's it's of this sort of people used to call it weaker and that uh, that's bollocks as far as i'm concerned it's not weaker um, I never did know what the W meant, but it's it's not weaker. Um, but it is it is a more um, kinder way of introducing yourself to lotion P50. So if her skin, if she's put all these other things on and then she puts the lotion P50 on and she's getting a reaction very quickly with this lotion P50, then what's happening is, is that it goes back to my pH thing, she's coming in too, too high, too high and too strong. And you've got to go for this. Now, obviously, she could go, she could just work through the purging but there's fear. Of course there's fear. She's had a big, big, bad reaction. Um, yeah, I, I think it must have been, I'm getting the impression about six months ago. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very interesting, she says. I won't spend time putting that in. Thank you. So she's going to, she's scared. So the minute she's getting a pimple, the minute she's getting some sort of redness, there's going to be a panic. So she's going to back off the P50. And what she's then done is she's waited a week and then she's had another go. So your skin isn't learning anything. I mean, think of it like a stroppy teenager, isn't it? It's like trying to get them to do something. Do that, no. All right, then. come back the next week. Do that, no. You get, you're going to get nowhere, right? You just keep bashing it over the head. So to treat purging, I don't think she liked my solution. People never do. But this goes back to my point that I always talk about, and this is positive and negative. Do things in isolation. Identify, try and identify what works and what doesn't work by suddenly adding in three new serums and a lotion P50 and a targeting serum and a mask all into the skin all at the same time. We have got no idea who's going to get the credit and who's, who's the bad boy. Now, Joanna's identified that lotion P50 is the bad boy. And to be fair to her, she's probably right, but it's unfair. It's going back to this teenager. You're picking on the wrong one, all right? What we need to do is strip it all back, do the dampened cotton pad thing with the lotion P50. So many people miss out because they're so desperate to push ahead and get all the benefits. No, 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 less is more. So the solution to purging is consistency, 
right? But drop it back a bit. Slow the situation down, all right? Take away all the other things that the skin's got to deal with, right? It doesn't matter that it's dehydrated. It doesn't matter that you've got a pimple, she says. I know it does, but just focus on one thing, and that is all about getting the skin mantle or your skin microbiome happy with this liquid exfoliator with this level of active ingredient and as i say i'm not just talking about lotion p50 here i'm talking about any aha pha dampen it down add it to your skin but before you add it to your skin clean your skin with uh, cleansing milk right only no wipes no foaming washes okay no rubbing nothing at all just something gently that just goes on the skin then use a dampened cotton pad, put your product on that dampened cotton pad and just dab it onto your skin gently. I know it's like you've got all day, isn't it really? But I suppose we have these days. Just dab it on gently. No, no, just dab this product on, right? If it tingles, fine. It might just, it just contract a little bit, fine. It's dropping the pH of your skin down. So you and get that funny strange feeling it's exactly the strange funny feeling you get if you put soap on it as well I'll, I'll read that in a sec because I'll lose my thread so you've got to just dampen it down and dab it on right but it's got to be on clean skin that hasn't had its alkaline level pushed too high you get around the right way always got to get around the right way okay then dab that on then if skin is bad I have done I've often recommended cleansing milk back on not fancy cream not a fancy serum no multi-use actives no multi-use this i mean again you know mind your mind your b3 creams and your b6s just you could go aloe vera gel something like that if you know that you're okay with that but just very very gently and very very boringly stare at all your lovely lovely products on the shelf for at least seven to ten days and just repeat this process over and over again you can do it day and night or just day whatever it is that suits you whatever it is that you think your skin can work it may get worse and it may get better you may get to day three and think oh this is fantastic so then you could put a little bit more product on and a little bit less water but don't forget it's going to purge again right but don't retreat keep pushing through you just keep pushing through but don't jump ahead and think oh brilliant you know i can whack all this other stuff on it now just let it complete its cycle give it a good two weeks okay and what you can do during that period is if you wanted to push it up one day and then go back down you know you could use it like neat one day and then you could drop it back down to dampen down another day or you could use it you know neat in the morning and dampen down in the evening right you can play around with this and build up its tolerances because if you don't get this right okay all those fancy serums all those fancy actives and especially from biological reishi all you've got is a bunch of smelly stuff that's not working to its best ability let's say expensive smelly stuff right all this stuff over here all your targeting serums to do all the stuff that you want it to do wants a happy place and you've got to push through this purging to get it to a happy place before you start adding all your healings, your zincs and your, I mean, she's got erythiros in her group. Um, I said that right. Yeah, she's got like rosacea stuff in there. She'd got mask vermix in there. I mean, your skin's not going to know what to do with any of that stuff if it hasn't got this balance right first. All right. So the advice then on the other side of the coin, if you've had an, an allergic reaction to something, Obviously, what I want you to do is I want you to remove that product instantly. And even on red, um, inflamed skin, <laughs> I'm scarily saying this out loud, I would still go lotion P50, dampen down, or sorry, rephrase that. I would go liquid exfoliator, dampen down on a uh, dampened cotton pad to help reduce that inflammation and push your skin forward. But the, the similarities with the two problems is simplify your skin routine take away all the confusion all right let it work it out slowly for itself with a little bit of help it's the back to basics is what i really need you to do to to treat these things then as you move forward yes i want you to look at things like zinc you know and copper and all these healing type products absolutely but what you may find is you don't need them 
because you'll have solved the issue at the beginning okay you shouldn't really need massive hydrating products okay if you've got your pee your your exfoliation process right first because then when you start adding in your other actives and looking at your, your retinols and your vitamin C's and doing all these other things you can trust your skin cells to cope with these active ingredients and this will help to improve your overall skincare routine all right I hope that helps I think I've covered everything off on my little thing to get across let's have a look at the questions because it's it's all this p50 talk it gets you all going doesn't it um, right, let's pop that onto there. Hi, I love lactic acid glycolic. I've never done fine. Never had a bad reaction. Have um, sorry, I need to look up like that. Don't I? Reaction with creams, uh, organic, but uh, only on my eyes. Mm. The other hand, I have often made reaction. Yeah, well, that's your inf that's your immune system. It so around the eyes. Um, there is you don't have any pores basically kind of close to your eyes so the only way your eyes can be protected is through your lymphatic system so it, in theory it sort of leaks straight into the backs of your eyes and there you can get this sort of puffy um, you know tired eyes and then you get reactions the only ah, that's what I was going to talk about with about with them um, biological reishi as well I'll come back to that Polly I'll answer that in a second Polly um, yeah so the only thing that I then thought I'll answer that Polly the the other thing I want Joanne asked me was you know could I be reacting allergically to any of the products and this is why I wanted to sort of separate the two sides in my experience with her product range no I have chucked all sorts of stuff at all sorts of situations and when the product is of good quality and you know the ingredients are raw and in the most natural form when you've got the base right, you your skin has the ability to deal with any of these extracts or any of the ad additional ingredients to what their intent is. OK, it's only other types of products that um, other ingredients is that give these things shelf life and stuff like that that you more often have reactions to. But obviously, big sweeping statement, it can all depend on your own individual immune system. You know, you know that probably best than, than I do. Um, but I did have one reaction once, and it was to Oligo Proteins, which is a BR um, a central, quintessential serum. And um, it was for uh, brightening, it's pigmentation. It was one of their first ever pigmentations. And it was one of their only serums that they ever said never mix. So there was something in it. And I think it was the iodine that was in it. Wow, this one lady. And of course, you should never say never, should you? Never say never. Oh, I never get a reaction with skin with BR. It's brilliant. <laughs> she literally, she had a facial. She took home P50, some cleansing milk and a serum and a cream. She woke up the next day, like, big puffy eyes. And my heart was like, oh my God. Absolute massive panic. To the point that I had to go around and have a look to make sure she was okay. So yeah, your eyes can be a big indicator and maybe sometimes a bit quicker than a pimple. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, eyes are a bit sensitive. But that when you said that, that's my initial thought is because there's it can't get into the pores as much. And you know, you very rarely get sort of spots, you know, up here. So it, it has to metabolise what's on the skin in different, slightly different ways. To be fair though, I have seen milia up here, which is very difficult to get off. Um, Millie is like that really white hard um, spot that people get that you can't pop. It's because it's the cholesterol. It's hardened, hardened sebum. Yeah, somewhere else then. And it gets stuck in the eyes and they're really hard to get rid of. And I've seen those close into the eyes because they often come here. But I'm talking about in your eyes when you use eye cream. So I hope that helps answers that. Uh, so Polly, sorry, I'm, I have to look down. <laughs> You see the top of my forehead. It's not very good, is it? Polly, I've been using P50 since October. Love it. Is there a serum I can use for anti-aging to go with it? I have combination skin. Um, and uh, what's that? Broken capillaries. Um, Polly, ring, ring us. Um, if you're UK-based, just ring your local biological ratio people. and They'll go through the whole thing with you. There's something like 15 different quintessential serums. Um, and there's like five or six targeted serums. And there's about eight different creams. I mean, you know, it, it, it's out there. And anti-aging... You know what's anti-aging um it's it's too big of a thing it you kind of gotta if you have a look at when i talk about your skin health okay look at your skin health 
look at your pre look at your preparation phase look at your targeting look at your preserves you know how you preserve your skin you know what's your spf like you know all of this is anti-aging there isn't just one serum that will solve all of this anti-aging is is giving your skin cells strength and mobility to let things in and keep stuff out that's anti-aging i suppose um so it's a bit of a big bit of a big open question that one it's a bit hard to answer i'm a bit vague um most people start with hydration i suppose you know as long as your skin's got a bounce and it and it's not dry then you're on to a winner you're then looking at things like peptides to get you know proteins you're looking at lipids so vitamins e's and a's and d's and things like that you know and then skin cell turnover that's that's anti-aging to me sorry polly that wasn't very helpful and nikki what's the best cleanser for combination skin please i uh, assuming you're meaning on p on the br range um but any to be honest um again i don't really talk about combination skin or oily skin or this sort of skin you've got skin that is potentially giving you oil at certain times of the day and uh, potentially not on other times of the day right so you just got an imbalance there so again any kind of cleansing milk that will just clean and emit oil and then uh, a good liquid exfoliator again keeping it very uh, calm you know an AHA or a, with a little bit of BHA in it so a little bit of salicylic acid a little bit of glycolic and a little bit of lactic acid type acid toner would then um, get that balance right because combination skin is just a bit vague it's not your fault I'm just saying about how people use the word combination skin it just means yeah you've got a little bit of oil here and here but not here okay so with your exfoliation process that would help balance that out and a good cleanser is any cleanser that is milk milk based no foaming is my massive obsession anything that's milk based um, from a product that you like that was it that's within your range and it doesn't really need to have massive fancy ingredients either you're just looking for that kind of lactic acid kind of soothing cleaning type product to then pre-pep it with your exfoliation with your acid toners um, or liquid exfoliators and then move into your sort of targeting serums looking at um, your sort of retinols your vitamin C's, your vitamin B mixes and all that wonderful world of targeting serum. So yeah, just any kind of cleansing milk, honestly, it's great, great to do. Our broken capillaries permanent. I've had electrolysis treatment and the ones on my nose. Um, so Polly's, let me just get rid of Nikki's question. Polly's asking me about uh, broken capillaries on the nose. Um, it's hard to say permanent, Polly. I've got them. Uh, I've had them zapped too and they have come back. Um, I don't believe that there's a cream that can get rid of a broken capillary, so don't go down that route. You can, you can keep getting them treated, but the, if your body wants the buggers there, it will keep putting them there, a bit like uh, veins in our legs. Um, but yeah, you just keep getting them zapped um, with um, the lamp probe. That's how I had mine done. It is the most painful procedure. Ooh, it's horrible. Um, but yes, they're pretty much permanent is the answer to your question, but manageable. But the result wasn't permanent. Yes, I agree. Sorry, I just read your message properly. Yeah, I know. It just, I think it's anything to do with your nose. I mean, I notice it when we do things on the lip as well. There's always, you know, um, whenever you do micro needling around here or whenever people talk to me about lip filler, I, it's just the most sensitive area in the world. I mean, you notice I'm always red there. I've always got a bit of a redness there. So, mm, yeah, not, not nice, I'm afraid. Um, so who cares? You know, it's a bit of redness. I'm sure it's fine absolutely fine i'm sure you're beautiful as i always say you are fabulous i just want you to feel it <laughs> lovely so that's all the questions that have come out of there so that's good i'm glad we've we've covered those off so the other thing i wanted to talk about i've spoke about how to treat them and i just wanted to typically the, the last dash at the end is just have a little bit of my nutrition corner forcing in nutrition into my skin talks um i'm obsessed about it thanks yes i know yeah sorry polly she says oh, i just have to live with them yeah you keep getting them treated and it's probably like having your legs wax <laughs> the more you do it you probably just get used to it um and you know technology is always changing um they are always you know getting um a bit better and a bit less painful so you never know stick with it definitely so my nutrition corner really was about the question joanne gave me 
um, asked me about uh, her reaction to sun and she said, oh, I'm allergic to sun. That was it. She said, I had an allergic reaction to sun. And straight away I went, no, you can't be allergic to the sun. Don't be so ridiculous, you know. <laughs> Typical me. Um, but obviously you can be. You can be photosensitive to the sun. And what is it that she can do about it? So uh, one of my questions was, has she got lupus? Now, I have had a couple of clients that do have lupus um, and I wanted to just share things that you can do if you do have photosensitivity to the sun and your skin reacts in such a way. Um, I personally do get it as well. I, well, it's not a lupus, but I get a like a very prickly heat on my chest. Always have done. Um, I personally don't like the sun at all. I just can feel my whole body just kind of like, uh, I like being around it, don't get me wrong, but the minute I'm in it, there's just this goes on, no matter how thick my, P, um, my SPF is. So on a nutritional point of view, if you have um, high allergies, high inflammatory reactions to the sun and there's a photo... Uh, sensitivity around this area and you know you haven't got lupus uh, diagnosis or even if you have to be fair dietary wise what you're looking at is um, histamine so you're looking at helping to reduce your histamine levels in your diet because the reaction on your skin is a raised histamine so nine times out of ten you'll you'll complain to the doctor and they'll give you a pyroton and they'll give you you know to to help with the histamine so you can influence this yourself by reducing histamine based foods and most histamine-based foods are things that have aged, right? Um, so food can start off not having histamine, right? But then the more you leave it in the fridge, the histamine will grow, okay? And then when you eat that said food, you can't tell. It's not like a fungus or <laughs> anything like that. You can't tell that it's histamine has grown. And you eat, you, you know, you enjoy the food. And the problem is with histamine in the body is that it's a bit like an immune reaction it's not always instant the histamine is a bit like a bath okay so if you if you have your nice bath and you fill it up with water that's absolutely fine and you can have your bath and in and out in and out and and there's no particular problem right so the histamine's the water going in going out going in. and you'll use your tap to put your water in and take your water out and this is how the body normally naturally deals with the histamine levels all right so what happens is add a bit of sun, add a little bit of an immune response, add a little bit of uh, allergicness going on in the world. And what happens is if somebody leaves the tap on, right? And we all know what happens when the tap's left on. And the problem is, is that once it goes over the top of the bath and your histamine levels are up, there's no holding it. It's all out there, right? So all the water just goes absolutely everywhere, right? Now, this is what histamine's like. It's absolutely fine, and you can have a deep bathtub. <laughs> My analogy's working. But anyway, you can have a very, very deep bathtub. But the minute it goes over, poof, right, you've got all the reactions under the sun. As soon as you turn the tap off and the water goes back below the bathtub line, off goes the, off go the symptoms, right? So it, it, it's kind of, it goes so far, and then just one little olive can just tip you over the edge right now i use olives because olives are, um, are quite high histamine foods so you can go so far with an olive and then all of a sudden one extra olive bang you've got an instant reaction and the poor olive gets gets the gets all the blame so what i want you to consider or have a look at or do some research on is looking at these anti-inflammatory type foods okay and also there are um supplements which is where i was going with this that can help you all right during these times or if you've got these kind of rashes on your skin that you're a bit unsure of and quite not quite sure what to do with it um you're looking at things that contain zinc and copper like i said earlier and there's some great supplements on the market and there's one that i recommend called skin complex um yeah is that right hi me skin perfecting complex and I've used it a couple of times with clients when they have this high histamine reaction and they have quite itchy skin and they get these red blotches and they've got this photosensitivity um, also with rosacea rosacea is another sort of sim similar thing now rosacea is only ever rosacea if it's across your nose right if it's anywhere else that's not rosacea all right so just get that right in your, in your minds as well so if you've got that kind of pimply um, you know uh, red raw type skin there are some things that you can do nutritionally to also help you rather than just looking 
at products on your skin and it's your histamine and your anti-inflammatory type foods that will help you with that on an internal basis and my skin perfecting complex i'll put the link in the comments for you so you can have a look at that uh, and look at some solutions to help so that was my little fudging of a little bit of nutrition advice backed onto the back of a uh, lotion p50 i think it was seamless Probably not. Anyway, so I've got a final message there. Thanks a lot. Must go thanks. Um, have a good day. And you guys. Um, so that's me. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, make some comments. Ask me some questions. I've only got a couple more weeks of this because when I go back to clinic, my Fridays are often quite full with clients, which is fantastic. And, um, and I've really quite enjoyed it, actually, getting to understand the issues and the concerns that you get and also forcing you all to listen to me about nutrition uh, when you come to listen to me about skin. But um, it's, they're both as important. And as I say, you know, you are all fabulous. Um, I just want to help you feel fabulous from the inside and out. So um, have a look around the channel, take a look, subscribe and join me on a Friday at one o'clock whilst we're in lockdown. All right. Enjoy, everyone.